Hello. Good morning. Hey, is that John? Yes. Hey, good. Thank you, sir. Whoops, wrong spot. There's the last star for you. <laughs> you my gold star for the day? That's exactly right. Yes, you get a gold star. <laughs> All right. Um, which Dan is that on the call? Dan Berger. Dan Berger. Okay. Thank you. And Joe Sherman, are you there? Joe, are you on mute? Yes, I was on mute. I'm here. All right, cool. Thank you. Hi, Eric, are you there? Eric, are you there? I am. Excellent. Cool. Thank you. Uh, Louis? I think that's yep, Louis. Hello. Right? hello. Yep. How come it shows up as Henry? It's kind of interesting. Uh, yeah, that's my email. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We actually might have a low attendance today. It seemed like a lot of people um, had conflicts. So. I do expect Dan and Clemens to call in, so they should be. Oh, excellent. Cool. Actually, it's kind of a shame that Google can't make it, because I was hoping that we might be able to discuss some of Thomas's PRs, but I guess not. Uh, David, are you there? David Lyle? Okay. Oh, David? Yes. Oh, there you are. Gotcha. Okay, thank you. Right. Okay. Maybe some audio is having a tough time connecting. Thanks. Yeah. And Chris, are you there? Yep. Excellent. Thank you. Varun, are you there? Whoops. Varun, are you there? Yep. Excellent. Thank you. Do, 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 do. Hi, Matt. Hey, Doug. How's it going? <laughs> <laughs> That's a... Never mind. Viom, are you there? Yep, this is Viom here. Excellent, thank you. Let's see, it's interesting watching these uh, people's names bounce around the, uh, the participant list, trying to keep them in order. And Sarah, are you there? I am. You might be the only uh, Googler on the call. Um, uh, the other, no, not, not Sarah. Rachel. Rachel said uh, the other folks may not be able to make it. Make it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, well, welcome. Uh, Jim Curtis, Thank you there? Jim? I see you off mute. Okay, I'll come back to Jim. Klaus, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Thank you. Austin, are you on the call yet? No. Okay. What about Jim? You, are you there yet? All right. Oh, Steve, are you there? I'm here. Excellent. Thank you. Do, do, do. You guys are really early today. That's good. Uh, William. William, are you there? William, I know you're there. I can sense it. 
And Doug, Jim says he's here. He's having mic issues. Oh, okay. Oh, there he is. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I missed that. Okay. All right, the list just grew. So who did I miss? Eat it. Are you there? Eat it. Yes, I just joined. Oh, cool. Okay, cool. Thank you. And let's circle back around to William. Are you there? Yep, I'm here. Excellent. Austin, are you on the call yet? Okay, uh, Sean, are you there? Sean Feldman, I'm here. Excellent, thank you. Let's see. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Clemens and Dan just joined. Ah, it's Clemens, thank you, and Dan, okay. And that is Russell Nova, right? Yes. Excellent. See, I can eventually remember these things. Hey, I see Austin now. Thank you, Austin. Hey, Doug. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, okay, did I miss anybody? Doo -doo -doo. Is there anybody on the call who does not have an asterisk next to their name? I think I got everybody this time. 21. Okay, let's give people just another minute or so, and then we'll get started. Yeah, I did mute. No, I'm not. <laughs> Hey, Lee, are you there? Lee, are you there? Hey, Doug. Hey, happy hey. Thursday. Happy Thursday. <laughs> and Bob, are you there? Did I, yeah, I'm here. Excellent. OK, uh, let's go ahead and get started with one last quick call. Is there anybody on the call who I did not add to the attendee list with an asterisk? I think I got everybody. All right, in that case, cool, let's get started. I assume you guys can see my screen. Thank you, Austin. All right, um, oops, let's get this out of the way, it's blocking me. <clears throat> All right, so first up on the agenda, a reminder for KubeCon. Um, as of right now, we are still planning on it being an official meeting or the face-to-face -face, uh, portion of our event there. Uh, we'll be an official meeting, as soon, uh, assuming we can get a uh, dial-in which will probably be the Zoom call. So assuming my wireless, we should be good to go. Um, just a quick question. In, in a previous phone call, people asked if they could get to the face-to-face -face meeting without actually buying tickets to the conference itself. Um, we were wondering, is there actually anybody who's planning on going to the face-to-face -face meeting who is not going to be attending the conference? Yeah, I, frankly, I'm torn of whether I should go to the conference proper. OK, so as of right now, you have not bought a ticket then, right, Clemens? Uh, I have not yet bought a ticket. OK. But if I need to, I will. OK, I believe uh, Chris was supposed to be on the call, and he was telling me earlier today that we should be able to make an exception for people who want to attend the face-to-face. -face. Um, now, if you, if, you, if you want to join the face-to-face, -face, but not the rest of the conference, were you also hoping to attend the BOF session, or the Birds of a Feather session? Uh, well, everything that's related. Yeah, that's what I thought. OK. OK, so let me double check with Chris later. Um, it's not that I'm cheap. It's just that the point is I'm not sure how much I uh, I will be at that conference. Understood. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'll check with Chris to make sure you can get in. Uh, oops, can't spell. All right. Cool. All right. Um, I know I have an additional section later on for uh, talking about the KubeCon planning stuff, but in this particular thing, just about the uh, – just about the topics listed here. Are there any other questions or comments related to that? All right, so just let you guys know, we were we did ask for a BOF session um, and we finally got it approved. And it's gonna be Wednesday, May 2nd at 4.25 till five. Um, I guess there's nothing really much more to say to that. We will talk about later on in the call, you know, what we wanna do with that. Um, but I just wanted to let you guys know that uh, we do have the BOF session set up, which is all good. So before we get into some of the other meteor discussions, I did want to address Kathy's PR that was supposed to have been talked about last week, but unfortunately I messed up and dropped it from the agenda by mistake. Um, so hopefully everybody has looked at this. She just wants to add an event correlation use case to our use case doc for consideration by the working group. I believe it already has um, uh, one LGTM aside from mine. Are there any questions or comments on this one? 
Okay. Is there any objection to, to accepting this one? All right, cool. Thank you guys very much for the quick review of that one. Oops, hold on. All right, now, I believe uh, last week's call, Austin mentioned that we should probably try to gather the list of issues and PRs we want in to uh, include for consideration for our 0 0.1 release. Um, so Bill referred to it as an MVP, but whichever way you want to think of it, we decided uh, on this week's call to discuss that. As of right now, I don't believe I've seen anybody uh, comment on any issue or PR saying they want it included aside from the one that I tag, which is to get an HTTP mapping proposal yep. out there. I'm sorry, was this one want to comment? I agree. Uh, okay. <laughs> so um, so let's, let's start with the one that was tagged as wanting to be included. Um, does anybody have any comment on whether it should or should not be included? Let me go ahead and open it up in case you haven't looked at it. This was from Clemens. He basically talks about two different, four. actually, I'll let you talk to Clemens. Okay. Um, yeah, so I actually made progress, and I have pretty much an IETF uh, RFC style document about this now um, that I'm going to make available later today. I just uh, didn't get it done uh, last night because of travel. Um, it, but it's in the spirit, it looks kind of similar to the straw man here where um, uh, it's not exactly the same, some variations because I thought about it a little bit, a little bit more, but this is effectively taking our properties that we have and creates um, a HTTP mapping for them where I have two models. Um, one is the binary model, the other one I now call the structured model, um, where you can take a cloud event that has data. And so the first one, the binary one, is if the data is something from, let's say an IoT device, that is in some proprietary format that you simply want to go and describe with metadata, but then route on as is. Um, that's what the binary format is for. Um, so all the, um, for the HTTP projection, um, all the cloud events properties go into uh, HTTP headers. Um, I've been toying around with, two, there's two options here. One is to go and make a single header um, and then put JSON into that a JSON value into that header. Um, that has the problem that um, that header value may run very long and then may run into very practical limitations of HTTP servers. Um, also, people may want to use um, do some filtering or um, you know anything of in terms of logic on HTTP server based on the values that on the header values uh, without forcing them to, to parse JSON. That's why I exploded them into uh, um, individual um, headers. The other one is um, a more compact one or more friendly one for routing, um, where you have um, a JSON projection in this case for uh, the um, event properties. Um, and the JSON, what I chose to do, and what you'll see today when I go in and put that PR in, is I actually submit two documents. Uh, one is the HTTP mapping, the other one is a JSON event format. The JSON event format basically codifies what I have here, and obviously this is based on an earlier draft that we have, which effectively says this is how you take these events that we have so far defined and how you put them into, how you first of all uh, define them individually. Uh, or express them individually as JSON values, and then how you put an envelope around them, um, and uh, also how you specifically treat the data property. Um, if the data property contains JSON, then it's gonna be projected as it is here. If the data property contains um, something that's not JSON, um, it will be um, Base64 encoded, and then the content type will des describe um, what's in there. Um, that's also addressing a question, an issue question that Doug, you raised um, this week um, on, on how data should be represented. So I have the, so that's the JSON event mapping. I have that almost done. And then the HTTP mapping basically picks that up and then um, uses that mapping to um, uh, do what I call the structured mode. So you'll be able to go and read this um, sometime at the end of the day. The, what, the reason why I split this up in this way is um, first, uh, we certainly want down the road, we want to go and um, define um, transport mappings for MQP and MQTT. Uh, I might actually go and uh, immediately 
of following do a straw man for one of the two, just to make sure that the HTTP mapping doesn't have any weird HTTP isms in it. Um, or sorry, that that the the that we know that this can be mapped to two uh, transports. Um, and then for the um, for the JSON event mapping, um, I don't think that necessarily stands alone. People who are concerned about footprints, specifically in IoT case, uh, may want to have an alternative and may want to use, for instance, message pack. And uh, so by splitting these things up into the core spec that we're working on right now and this event, the event encoding um, or event format plus the, the uh, a triangle of specs that are composable, and that's that's what I'm aiming for. Okay, so uh, let's let's circle back around without getting. So into you'll be which... able to see, as I said, you'll be able to see that um, uh, this afternoon, sometime when I'm when I have them ready for submission. I'm, right. I'm like two hours away from that. Okay, cool. And and so at this point in time, let's not necessarily dive into a deep discussion of the technical details of the PR, of the PR that's coming itself, but rather. Uh, I'd like to get into a discussion about whether people think it's valid to include this in our 0 0.1 milestone or not. I'll, I'll, I'll jump in here. Um, when, when Clemens? Did, when did you lose me? I can still hear you, Clemens. Uh, we, we lost connection at some point, I, but I don't know when. I think I heard you most of the time. Okay, good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, then, then it just dropped just in time. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. To, to chime in on Doug's question, um, Clemens, I think you did a great job here. These simple examples are worth, you know, 20 pages of documentation. I think we should absolutely make shipping these examples with the first version of the specification mandatory because they explain everything in a very simple manner. So just to be clear, though, um, Austin, I, I believe we're talking about not just shipping examples, but the actual spec text around what they actually should look like. Are you okay with that as well? Okay. Yes. Cool. Yeah. If if you if you uh, a dog, can you uh, give me uh, uh, the screen for a second? Yeah. Sure. Um, hold on a sec. There you go. Go for it. All right. Um, just just for you to get a feel of what's there. Uh, can you see? Yes. Okay. So, so this is the HTTP transport binding. Um, and um, I basically have, so I just let you, I just scroll through so you have an, a sense of what's there. Um, I define the relation to HTTP. Uh, what I'm not doing is I'm not prescribing any use of any methods or how the URIs should be shaped. I'm basically just making this a mapping to HTTP messages. This can be mapped to a request, this can be mapped to a response, and I'm not making any hard constraints about whether you should go and, and, and send an event with a put or with a post, whether you can, go, you can return an event from, from a get. Um, it's just really how the, the event is exploded onto the HTTP message. And then if we want to go and create a further spec that defines how a webhook functions, we can do that. But this thing here kind of composes with anything you want to do with HTTP with events, whether you want to send them or you want to solicit them. Um, this here describes what I just explained with the structured and the binary uh, content modes, kind of the overview, talks about the event formats, um, then references the JSON format. The JSON format is asserted here. I have a, I do have something that is required as a bug fix effectively for the existing spec. Um, based on uh, the base type system, because we're currently referring to a base type system in the core spec, but we're not defining it. So, so Clemens, just I, I, I actually do want to hear all this, but I, I think right now I, I'd I know, keep I just focus wanna, on high I, level and not go into the technical details. But one, one, uh, one minute. Okay, go ahead. Um, and uh, then I define. Um, how we're using the properties. I'm not calling them all out because I want to keep that, that, that uh, thing flexible for um, all the extensions and changes we want to, want to make. So I just call out what I need to call out. And then I define the message mapping and then at, down the bottom I have effectively the examples that you just saw um, in, the, in the issue. I have them here um, for, this is the binary mapping. And then down here I have the, uh, the structured mapping. So you'll be able to go and see this today. That's it. Excellent. I'm, I'm moving forward to it. It looks like it's on the right track, in my opinion. Nice job, Clemens. 
Yep. Okay, so I've heard at least a couple people's voice and opinion about including this in 0 0.1. Are there any other opinions in favor or against? I see a couple plus ones in there. Are there, is anybody on the call who objects to in this going in under 0 0.1? Okay, not hearing any. Um, hold on a sec. Oops. Okay, so are there any other issues or PRs that currently exist or ones that you feel we need to open that should be included in 0 0.1? Yeah, so based on what I just said, um, I think we need to define the type system. Um, and I can, uh, basically what I'm thinking is the, the text that I wrote for the JSON mapping, I wanna have that sitting in the, in the base spec. So I'm gonna break that out into the PR. Um, and the, the type system really is like, we're using string and URI and timestamp and map. Um, and then we have, we have uh, uh, data as um, uh, loosely defined as arbitrary data. And I think that should be object. And so, I have, so I'm gonna give, give a PR for that. And that's required for me to go build on. Otherwise I haven't seen anything. Okay, and you said that PR is coming today as well, or, or is that a follow-up? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to have that all at the end of the day. Okay, so is there any discussion around including a defining our type system as Clemens currently uh, expressed it? Depends how controversial it's going to be. <laughs> I'm literally not adding anything. I'm just, I'm just taking the, the expressions that we already have on the side of the properties and say, this is what these are. So what if we take the approach of uh, it sounds reasonable, pending actually looking at the PR, and if it gets too hairy, then we may revisit that decision. How's that? Yeah, sure. Okay. So Is there I, any? I I'm sorry. A, Go ahead, Kathy. Yeah. So I hope this will also cover, um, in addition to HTTP event, also cover other event type like storage, um, like timer, or any other like stream, uh, like messaging. Uh, I'm not sure whether it's going to cover it. It's so, so the goal of this is how you take a cloud events event and send it over HTTP. That is the scope of that, that, that one specification that I'm writing. And then there can be other specifications that say, here's how you take a cloud events event and route that over MQTT. And this is how, this is how you do it over AMQP. Um, a storage event is... Um, if you want, if you want to have a way to to define how an event ought to be um, sitting in a storage system, um, you can certainly create a binding for that. But I'm not sure how that would look. So, so you are saying, so what you mean is this will only cover how the events will be sent over HTTP, right? That is correct. Yes, that's the first right. step because I think that's what everybody is using as the baseline. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. oh. So basically, the HTTP API gateway event, something like that, this will cover something like that, right? It's it's literally how this the 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 cloud event event is projected onto an HTTP message, and this will work for requests, and it will work for responses, and then it will work for every API that you're using today with HTTP. Okay, yeah, if, okay, I see. Yeah, I got to keep in mind that this isn't obviously the only thing we may do in the future. This is just for. 0 0.1, which is our goal for KubeCon. So over the next three weeks, beyond that, we can obviously add more later. Okay, yeah, makes sense. Thank you. If I might clarify to validate my, my understanding, uh, this is about how to send events, not about what kind of events those are, what Correct. source you have. Yeah, Correct. Correct, yes. Okay, any other comments, questions on that? Sounded like okay. Clemens was talking, but he's oh. muffled. Okay. Clemens, are you still there? Uh, yeah, I am. Are you? <laughs> yeah, it's, we weren't sure if you were trying to talk or not. Um, it's, it's okay. It's just, uh, I just want, want to clarify, it's just a mapping. I'm not, I'm actually making the points in both specs. I'm not redefining anything. Okay, so let me, let me circle back around then. Do we conditionally approve Clemens' idea for defining our type system? And obviously, as I said here in the notes, we can revisit that decision if it ends up being something that's beyond what we want to do for 0 0.1, but conditionally approve it. Is, is there any objection to that? Okay. In that case, are there other topics, PRs, issues, 
existing or too, too soon be created that people would like to include in 0 0.1? Going once. There's a release ticket. There's a JSON sync up t uh, ticket. I think there are must also for zero one. Okay. Yeah, I would. I would agree with that. Hope, I'm hoping we actually, we can actually close that one today. But yes, I, I would agree. Yeah. yeah. For people, I, I, I think I think what I'm I think the the JSON mapping that I'm that I'm proposing should be that. Yeah, I was, I was actually hoping your PR might actually kill off some of the stuff we've already agreed to, to be honest. Yeah. Yep. Because the, the, we, we don't have a JSON serialization. We have something that looks like JSON maybe, but we don't have a formal JSON serialization. That's why I ended up writing one because I was at some point like, oh, how do I do this? So I have to go and write one. Yeah. Um, what I posted in the chat, uh, like I, I noticed in this uh, example, is that uh, it's referencing some uh, ideas that you wanted to promote, like uh, instead of this uh, source being your URL, your I, like uh, having topics and subjects and stuff. Like uh, no. it's really good that to just include examples uh, to what we already agreed, and not to have uh, like zero two in there, and then we release zero one. Um, the, the the PR that I'm going to file today is going to is is actually synced up with the spec. The, ah, cool. the issue the issue is not right. So okay. let's, put, let's put it this way: um, Is there any disagreement then with the idea of just making sure that whatever form of serialization stuff we talk about, whether it's Clemens PR, the existing document we have in there, we need to make sure those are all in sync by 0 0.1. Yes. Any disagreement with that? Okay, so let's, let me rephrase that actually. Um, hold on. Okay, so we approved that for 0 0.1. We'll figure out what the exact PRs that, that, that falls into later. All right, any other potential 0 0.1 issues, features, pull requests? A uh, quick comment on this, Doug. We mm -hmm. have in our roadmap, uh, we have <clears throat> almost a kind of a list of criteria that we'd like to ship with 0 0.1. Uh, Clemens just added a few things for including specifications for mapping cloud events to HTTP and for mapping cloud events to JSON and defining a type system. Can we add these into our 0 0.1 roadmap? I don't see why not. Sure. Would, so would someone like to take the AI to do that? I can probably do it right now, just via the GitHub UI. Update roadmap with our new requirements, right? Yes, and Clemens, this type system, how do you describe this? De uh, how would you describe this? Define a type system for cloud events values? Um, yes, and, and it's, yeah. It's really, it's really just that because we are using a type system already, I just want to go in and have a declaration section up front that says this is the, these are the values you can use. So if we if we currently have like event type, and event type is a string, but nothing says what the string is. So the point is, I just want to have a preamble that says here's a set of here's a set of types um, that the following properties are using. So it's not I'm not redefining. I'm just capturing the fact. Got it. Okay. All right. I'm assuming no one would object to updating our roadmap to align with what we just talked about. Is that correct? All right. Cool. Any other topics then, or any other issues uh, for 0 0.1? All right. Cool. That sounds like actually a relatively small list, especially once Clemens gets his PRs in today. So, hey, Doug. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, sorry. This is Stan. I. Um don't know if it had been talked about previously, but I just wanted to call out the notion of something like integrity, like a payload checksum or something along those lines, whether or not it's been talked about or if we'll include something like that in 0 0.1. I don't believe it's been mentioned. Anybody have any comments on that one? Uh, TLS does that for you. I'm more so talking about the, I'm not talking about the specific statement of like a malicious middleware that's reaching in and um, updating fields on the payload, more just that we can verify um, specifically that no bits have been mangled along the way. 
or if we want to try and guard against something like malicious middleware. I think there's separate use cases, but so just curious we, if it had been talked about. No, it hasn't been talked about um, that I'm aware of. So we have, so just, just anecdotal evidence, we have that in um, an AMPP, for instance, and uh, it was a giant circus um, to go and add the footer, which is then was supposed to host the signature. And I'm 10 years in, I'm not aware of anybody using it. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> I just wanted to kind of call out, like if we're not going to explicitly say, like we should explicitly call out as out of scope, not part of the specification, right? The notion of like generating checksums related to the envelope, the payload or both. So I think that might be a broader discussion. Um, Cause I, I think deciding whether it's in or out of scope is, is probably a good topic for later on when I think have, when, after I think people have a chance to think about it. Um, but let me ask a, let me ask more focused question. Is there anybody on the call who believes that dealing with integrity should be a mandatory for 0 0.1? Okay, so I'm not hearing any consensus around including that for 0 0.1, we, but I do think we should have the discussion later if that's okay, Stan. Yeah, absolutely. I just wanted to put it out there as a potential topic. Okay. Just because I haven't heard any conversation specifically about it yet. Yep, nope, that's a fair question. And that's why we're doing the brainstorming to make sure we don't miss anything. So I appreciate it. Yeah, I've had a similar interest in, in signatures and uh, other things. That would... Okay, so Stan, can I get you to open up an issue to make sure we don't forget about talking about this later? Yep, I'll do it right now. Excellent, thank you very much. Um, whoops, I could type. I have a quick question for Clemens. Uh, Clemens, as we add on more documentation on how the spec is mapped to various protocols, uh, can you design your PR in a way that um, will accommodate or establish a clear place for these docs to be added in the uh, in the project. Um, what do you mean? Do, do for you example, think just it, just a clear kind of organizational format as we continue oh, yeah. to add on docs for uh, the various other protocols. Maybe it's just yeah, like a I, protocols folder or something like that. Yeah, I, I have a. I call these. I call the protocol. I call the transport bindings and format. So I have currently I have HTTP transport binding, and then I think we're going to have an MQT transport binding and an MQP transport binding, and then I have a JSON format, and I think we're going to have a message pack format. Okay. All right. Okay. Any other potential topics for zero point one? All right. In that case, I believe we are done. Relatively short list, in my opinion. So wow. hopefully, uh, Clements PR will be out there today. Please review it. Um, as always, um, I'd like, it would be nice if we can get that in there relatively soon because the next thing I want to talk about is what are we going to do for KubeCon and this, our CNCF Con. Um, in particular, I'm interested in knowing if people would like to look at some sort of interoperability event since we will have a 0 0.1 hopefully by then. Mm -hmm. So I heard a yes from Clemens. <laughs> Anybody else interested in some sort of interoperability thing? Uh, I'm absolutely interested yeah. in that. It's just a question of, you know, what it does, kind of what it looks like at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. and, I, and just so you know, Mark, um, Mark Peake sent out a note earlier today with a doodle poll for some offline meetings uh, next week to discuss, you know, what this thing would actually look like. Anybody yeah. else come, have any comments? For game. Okay. Um, yeah, what, one quick comment. I'm not sure, is anyone else speaking about this at Cloud Native Con? No one? Does, does it sound like anyone, anyone else is talking about this? Okay. Uh, well, I have a talk at Cloud Native Con, and I was going to cover just this effort and announce it and hopefully show off this great interop demo. Um, how we do that, I'm open to all suggestions. You know, some, some goals I was kind of thinking about is um, would love to, sh you know, show off something that's pretty exciting and would love to include a lot of the people and their organizations and their technologies in this interop demo, although that could get very complicated. Um, but I'm open to that. I think it would be very cool if we almost had, 
you know, a nice group showing of all, of, all of, all, of all of us working together doing some type of interoperability demo. And I don't know what that looks like, um, but I'd love for that to be kind of the basis of, of the talk and open to even having other people come up on stage and talk a bit about it. But that, you know, we only have limited time, so I'm not sure how, how well that'll scale. But anyway, I just want to put that out there so everyone knows. Um, and I'm all in favor of discussing this further on separate calls. Yeah, I think that'd be a great topic for the call that Mark is setting up. And I, and I, I'd imagine multiple people would be interested in that. I don't know if at least from the IBM side, we would be, and I suspect Clemens would be as well yeah. since he already expressed an interest in this kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, Doc, we are also interested in this. Uh, so when is that meeting? Because I'm going to go on a business trip um, this Saturday, so. Right, Mark sent out a note earlier today with a, with a link to a doodle poll with some potential times. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can see it in the agenda doc. It's, it's right here, where I've basically I've highlighted. Okay. Okay. Okay, good. Okay, so I'm assuming during that call, the, a little more uh, concreteness will appear around what we're doing around an interop type of event and related to Austin's talk. Are there other things we should be looking at doing? So for example, um, we have, a bio, we have a bird of a feather session. Is there anything we'd like to do in preparation for that? So for example, I was thinking maybe we should have a potential list of topics or questions um, that we can ask ourselves that people in the audience, uh, you know, if, if people in the audience don't ask us questions, you know, we don't want to be silent. Um, just sort hey, of hey, opening hey, up here. Yeah. Could you explain the format of a, a BOF session? Actually, I'm not sure if I've attended one, so I'm not sure how they're usually structured. So usually the ones that I've attended have been fairly uh, free form. Um, usually it's more people come and ask questions, but if they don't have, if the audience members don't have specific questions of, of the people running the show, then usually they'll have a list of questions to help prompt people to ask questions or to just provide some overview of what's going on with that piece of work. At least that's been my experience. Maybe other people have had different experiences. So anybody else want to speak up? Yeah, that's been that's been about my experience as well. Sometimes the presenter will, um, yeah, just just give the shortest of uh, of intros, or maybe have or maybe walk people through a couple of slides, but in but with the intention of stopping and having a relatively lengthy discussion at at any point in the slides. Yeah, you know. Really, really trying to facilitate discussion more. The slides being there to facilitate discussion more than anything else. Yep. Does that help, Austin? Yep. Okay. So as I said, my, my initial thought was, well, actually, based on what Lisa said there, I hadn't thought of this before, but yeah, it might be good then for us to maybe put together a very quick set of slides just as a quick highlight of what we're doing so we can maybe talk to that for people who are completely clueless as to the exciting work that we're doing here. Um, but then beyond that, maybe just have a list of potential uh, list of topics to bring up for the audience members to uh, to get more information about it. But Austin, I would think if you actually have a formal talk, we may be able to steal some of your slides, right, for that kind of thing to provide an overview. Yes, it depends. Yeah, we can structure this various ways, but uh, you know, certainly can steal slides in that talk. I'll also direct people to the birds of a feather meeting. And okay. say, hey, if you're interested in this, you know, we could, you know, go to this meeting and we could have a nice interactive discussion about it. Okay. So maybe what we'll do is, as we get closer, well, maybe all I'll do is I'll put together a, a Google Doc or something for a list of potential sort of leading questions or leading topics for us to discuss at, at the birds of a feather if um, if the audience members aren't as uh, engaged as we'd like them to be, just to keep the conversation going. Um, and then beyond that, we can look at what you come up with for your talk and see whether we can steal that as a quick intro. And if not, then yeah, we can create a, our own version of a short intro just for the birds of a feather if necessary. But I think we have time to decide that later, if that's okay with people. So, uh, I think if we can, you know, um, in our, either in our presentation or questions to uh, talk about um, what are the typical use cases on the surveys or the events will be uh, can be used for. So people will have an idea, you know, about the value of our work, uh, of this group's work, work groups, I mean, work. Yep, I would agree. That makes sense. Got that in there. Thank you. Yeah, I have, I have some use case slides. I can send it to you. Okay. That'd be great. Thank you. So, some people are experimenting, implementing this uh, already, actually. So this could be a good time for people to show off, you know, 
uh, their various implementations of the spec. Yep. Yep, and feedback that they have for us in terms of issues they run into, perhaps. Yep. I, I also think a, a great goal for this meeting is going to be to start recruiting people who aren't infrastructure as a service providers, um, people from various verticals, and you know, try and get them into this group so we get those those valuable perspectives. Yep, makes sense. All right, anything else? Okay, now Austin, you had an AI here uh, to find out how people want their company participation mentioned. Mm -hmm. And we have PR54, which basically adds a list of our con contributors or something like that, it was Sarah's PR. Do you think that's sufficient or do you, or do you still think we need to do something else relative to your AI? Um, so first off on that PR, I think that's sufficient. I think there should be some language in there saying, you know, this, this doesn't constitute an official endorsement on behalf of all these people, you know, we're, we're merely collaborating or something to that effect. Um, however, at the same time, I've been talking to a lot of people in this working group and a lot of them, as long as we can get this release out and they're comfortable with it, feel comfortable with their companies kind of being showcased as being associated with this. And I don't know if there's any other way to do it than for me to just, I guess, check in with them and say, hey, are you okay if we put your, your logo on this? And we could also put text on there saying this does not constitute an official endorsement. We could just say this is, a, this is just a collaborative effort and these, and these are people who are participating. So you, um, said, so you said logo on this, define this. Oh, logo on marketing materials. Um, so first off, probably our, our website uh, for cloud events and then in presentations in slides either for the talk that I'm going to give at cloud native con uh, and the birds of a feather meeting Okay, so you you will reach out to everybody then they for any logo you choose to include okay. Yes, or or people can um, just send me an email Okay Yeah. If some companies were missing here how does that work? Do we send another PR or because this has been merged already, right? Correct. Yes. If you want your name, if you want your company added, yes, submit a pull request against uh, contributors.md. Okay. And uh, as far as effective participation as well, like I just curious, is, is there any criteria here? Because I don't know, there may be some names that don't actually actively participate or it doesn't really matter. Yeah, as of right now, we have not defined any sort of minimum bar. It's basically if you if you participate at, at any level and get your name added to the contributor list, then you're there. there there's, no, there's no there's no criteria to get added other than you you exist and you want to be there. Does that help? Okay, thank you. Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, okay. So the last topic I had in this section was the face to face meeting itself. Um, it, what, what were people's thoughts in this space? Were people assuming it was just a regular face-to-face, -face, a regular uh, working group meeting, and we're just going to go through the list of topics like we do normally, or are there very specific things people would like to do there because we're at a conference? So, for example, uh, Austin, I know you mentioned possibly doing an interop event during your talk. Um, I hadn't thought about that before. That's why I was wondering whether we should do an interop event during our face-to-face -face meeting. But if we're going to do it during your talk, then there's no need to do it twice. So what do people think? Yeah, I think the, the goal I have in mind for the talk I'm going to give is to show this to the world, show this to new people and, you know, excite them as to uh, its potential by showing them some, some examples of interoperability. I imagine that the face-to-face -face meeting was just for us to talk about, you know, just to meet up uh, with each other, get to know each other, um, and perhaps probably discuss what 0 0.2 look, or 2.0 looks like. Yeah. I, I find those face-to-face -face meetings very productive for just figuring out what the future will hold, okay. um, rather, than, rather than going through the process of, uh, you know, checking off list uh, item, items from the list, but rather just go and, and do the... It's, it's really hard in the format that we have to go and speculate about things or, or throw ideas around, but I think in the face-to-face -face it's going to be easier. So I would, I would probably 
do scoping discussions and then see in the scope that we kind of figure out together, you know, what are the things we want to do and then also uh, who does the work. Right. Okay. So it sounds like what I'm hearing so far is we would like to keep the face to face meeting to be more of sort of an internal discussion. Obviously other people are free to join, but it's mainly for us in terms of planning purposes or design discussions or anything else related to our work itself. It's not there necessarily to, to showcase our work to other people. It's for us to actually get some work done. Is that fair? Is there any disagreement with heading that direction? All right, cool. Okay, then is there anything else relative to planning discussions around KubeCon and CNCFCon? I know we'll probably, we'll talk about this in the future, but as of right now, are there other things people want to discuss? All right, in that case, Austin, I believe this was your topic, website status. Yeah, this is a quick one. I just wanted to check in with Dan because I saw some activity on the website repo. Um, and I just want to see how it's, how it's going. Yeah, I don't, unfortunately, I don't think you made uh, Oh, wait, no, Dan, you are there. I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm here. Um, yeah, I'm working on it uh, as we speak. Um, I haven't used Travis that much, so I'm running into some issues, but uh, I've almost got it publishing. So I think after that, I'll be able to configure the GitHub pages. Uh, component and it should be publishing and then we can uh, add the custom URL and move the uh, URL over the DNS entry over. Great. Should be done in the next couple of hours. Well, first off, Dan, thanks for doing that. Uh, super, super helpful. Our cloud events domain is certain is currently down. Um, so let us know as soon as you have something up and we'll ping the Linux Foundation to redirect it, uh, redirect those domains to the, uh, to the new website. Okay, yeah, I'll definitely have something up here in the next hour or two. Cool, thanks again for your work. Yeah. Excellent, any other questions for Dan? Excellent, and of course, thank you very much, Dan, for all your work there, I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yep, all right, so PR reviews, a couple of hopefully easy ones. Um, this one was just opened up today. It should be used instead of use in this sentence here. Everybody can just take a quick look at that. I was going to approve it, but I thought I'd wait for at least one more LGTM that I never got, so I decided to force it on you guys right now. Any objections to this one? Seems fairly straightforward. All right. Thank you guys very much. Oops. Okay, this next one was syncing up our JSON with uh, the, some of the PRs that we resolved last week. Unfortunately, when I first added the JSON serialization, there were just some fields I just flat out missed, like event time and content type. I have no idea how I missed that. But th those are just additions. The biggest change was changing source to be a URI and getting rid of namespace. Um, now, obviously, this is probably gonna change based upon what Clemens is gonna do with his PR, but this at least gets us in sync as of the current version of all the specs and documents. Are there any questions on this? That is fine. Okay. Any objections then to approving? All right. Cool. Thank you, guys. Next one. We have a status section of the spec that I was looking at the other day and looked at it, and, or was looking at it and realized this is pretty much old, right? Um, it has a mixture of list of things we're going to do, not going to do, which are issues now list. Some of it is just, um, just doesn't apply anymore. And given all the other stuff that we have related to this between our milestone documents, our issue list and stuff like that, I just don't think we need this section anymore. So I'm proposing that we remove it. Any questions on that? And in particular, since it also talks about the scope, we already have a scoping section in the spec, so we don't need to duplicate it. Any questions, comments? Any objections? Okay, cool. This one is kind of related. We have an old section of the spec that has, that's titled additional topics and questions. Um, I kind of view this as a list of potential to-do items. I believe most of these have actually been opened up as issues. Um, not all of them though. And I'm not asking for you guys to approve this today, but rather take a look at it. And if you think there's anything in here that, are, that we should actually discuss, uh, to please open up an issue for it. 
but otherwise I don't think this section is necessarily appropriate for the spec going forward and I'd like to remove it. So I was gonna give everybody till next week's call to, to see if there's anything in the list they'd like to include and if so, open up an issue. Otherwise, I'd like to propose next week that we remove this section. I'm not, and to be clear, I'm, again, I'm not asking people to vote on this today, but are there any questions on this? Is there any objections to heading down that path? Okay, thank you guys very much. Um, thank you. Okay, um, since Thomas is not on the call, I'm inclined to skip his two PRs unless there's somebody on the call who would like to talk to them on his, on his behalf. Okay. Oh, I, think, I think these are important ones. Um, I, wish, uh, I wish they were on the call today, but I think everyone should go and check this out because I think these are some of the more controversial pieces of 0 0.1. So if everyone can weigh, on, weigh in on these, that would be super helpful. Probably the most helpful thing you could do to move this forward. I think, so I think the, the, uh, the first one, adding namespace into event type, is, um, will be very helpful. The other one is kind of sparking a discussion about what are we going to do with custom, ex with custom headers. Um, and uh, that's something that might be a good topic to discuss um, face to face. Um, right now, extensions are very good for that um, because I can I can see very many different contexts in which you want to have extensibility, and so therefore I don't want to have ten buckets of of custom ex custom properties. So I think that's a discussion that we need to go and have. Right. So let me ask you just a quick question, and I don't like because Thomas isn't on the call. I don't think it's fair to necessarily have a deep discussion, but I am kind of curious just to get a sense of from the group. On the namespace or adding namespace to the event type, how do people feel in general about heading that direction? Ignoring some of the, the nitpicky details about the must versus may and all that other stuff, just in general, adding a namespace to the event type, does that seem like people, I mean, does it seem like people are in, in general in favor of that direction? Yes. Okay. Is there anybody on the call who thinks that'd be a mistake? I think nobody's happy with this uh, source as a URI, and if nobody's happy and uh, and there is an alternative, why why not uh, use this alternative? Even well, for the one. Uh, how is that? How, how do you feel that nobody's happy with sources URI? Oh, just from the comments uh, I saw, and like uh, everybody coming, but uh, uh, at least there are two known uh, proposals how to change from using sources URI. So like. Well, we just accepted that last week, didn't we? Yeah, I know, but I know I, I'm, that's my impression that nobody's really happy and that uh, uh, we're, we are we are excited about it. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> I, I think people are more more excited about that it was gone off the table than that it actually solves. Uh, no, we we love it. So. <laughs> Okay, anyway, I think I got my answer. People seem to be generally okay with the namespace and the event type. We just need to work on the actual wording. Wording. It's just fine. And I know the other one's a little more controversial, so I won't ask about that one. But before we move on, um, just to reiterate what Austin was saying, please review those so we can have some good discussions, preferably offline if possible, and then maybe even resolve them next week. So please take a look. Uh, yeah, one other note on the source labels topic. Um, I appreciate Thomas's kind of thought leadership here and the problems that this could potentially solve. I'm I'm kind of okay with passing on it for 0 0.1 if necessary, just because I do feel like this is something that we're kind of adding at well, this time, and we could we could potentially add it later. Well, so keep in mind, uh, we did not actually talk about including either one of those in 0 0.1. Um, are you suggesting that we maybe should include the first one in 0 0.1? Because we haven't actually tagged this as such. Hmm. Um, include the na namespace into 0 0.1? namespacing event type yep I think this is a pretty important one um, that's critical uh, Clemens do you feel otherwise uh, I think that the risk for collision is so low that um, I don't feel this really needs to be there I find namespacing is, is mostly an esoteric exercise in most cases um, and so I'm not I'm not opposed to adding it, 
but I'm also not, I don't think it's critical. Anybody else in the common opinion either way? Is this something maybe we should perhaps revisit for next week's call once people have a chance to look at his PR a little closer? Okay, I'm seeing Austin shake his head. I, I think so, especially because Thomas and uh, our Google colleagues will, will hopefully be on that call. Um, but in general, just as we approach each thing right now, we've got 20, like 26 days or something to finalize the specification and build some type of demo based off of it. So, you know, each, each thing we're looking at right now, we really need to, I, I believe, raise the question, do we actually need to focus on this right now? Yep. Okay. All right. Anything else related to Thomas's English muffins or PRs? They need to be rebased once these sync up stuff is merged. Yeah, obviously, yes. Yep, definitely. Okay, next one. This one, um, Lee, Lee opened up a pull request against the working group, not the cloud event spec, but the main working group thing to add a non-goal as identify, I'm sorry, a non-goal is identify one serverless project to rule them all. This uh, I think may have been originally added as a joke, but it might be actually be a good thing to include in there. And before I just approved it, I want to get people to take on it. Was that filed on April 1st? Uh, <laughs> I don't know, was it? It's two days ago. No, it was not. <laughs> <laughs> just check it. <laughs> Lee, is there anything like you'd like to say on this one since it's yours? Yeah, hey guys. Yeah, it's uh, phrased somewhat comically and not done well. Um, uh, but but it conveys the sentiment. So you know, feel you know, if we need to rephrase, feel free. Um, does anyone disagree with the sentiment? I love the sen sentiment. I, I love it too. Yes. I love it too. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so let's. I mean, ask. yeah, it's, it's it's a bit. It's not you know, terse or you know. Oh, I like it. Is there any objection then to approving it? Keep it in verbatim. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, any objection? Done. Okay, now unfortunately we don't have very much time left, so I don't think we're gonna be able to get into some of these other ones that are kind of meaty, but please do take a look at those PRs and get some discussions going out there. We're trying to do as much work offline as we can. Um, before I circle back around and do attendance, are there any other topics that are very quick that people would like to bring up? Okay, in that case, um, Stan, I heard you. Kathy, I heard you. Rob Dolan. Rob, are you still there? I saw you earlier. Rob? Okay, what about Farad? Maybe Rob was there on the call because we have- Hey, hey Doug, this is Rob Dolan. I'm here, but I am, uh, <clears throat> and I'm finally off mute. I'm uh, just listening in, and uh, for those of you who knew me from my previous life, I'm currently now uh, working at Oracle. Welcome to the group. Thank you much, Doug. I appreciate it. Yep. Seems like you've been doing a great job of uh, chairing. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Farad, are you there? I apologize if I'm butchering your name. Rod? I don't see a little microphone next to his name. Uh, Mark, are you still there? Mark Peake? Okay, I think Mark had to go. He, he was only jumping for a sec. Is there anybody sorry, on the call? Sorry, I was not mute. Yeah, I'm fine with it. I'm oh, sorry, is that Mark or Fraud? That's Fraud. Sorry, Farad. I was not mute. Sorry, yes. okay, got it. Thank you. Okay, is there anybody on the call who is not in the attendee list? Or have a uh, This is Ryan. This is Ryan from Alibaba. Got it. Okay, thank you. Apologize for missing you. Anybody else? All right. And then in that case, last chance for a very quick topic in the last five minutes. Excellent. Okay. In that case, please remember to go fill out um, Mark Peake's doodle poll for the offline meeting to discuss an interrupt event. Uh, we're hoping to get that going relatively quickly. So I think he's hoping to get something going early next week. And with that, I believe we're done. Thank you guys very much. I appreciate it. We got a lot done today. Thank Amazing. Yep. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Thank you guys. Thank very you. PRs, PRs for me later today. Yep. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. Excellent. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.